I have a rule on my channel that if I rate a book five, no, five stars, then I get rid of it. everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with another unhaul video. Most of these books are because I have a rule on my channel that if I rate a book three stars or lower, then I get rid of it back to the thrift store so that somebody else can enjoy it more than I did. So I thought that I would share the ones that I'm sending back off to the thrift store before I send them off back to the thrift store. So without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> The first book I have is actually not for that reason, it's just because I was sent two copies of this book, so I obviously do not need two copies of the exact same book. But it is Star Eater by Kirsten Hall, and I'm actually so excited to read this book because it's like cannibalistic nuns with magical powers, and I am so excited. I just think it sounds so cool, so... And now the rest of the books are because I rated them three stars or lower. So the first one to do with that situation is War Girls by Tony Onibuchi, and I gave this a three out of five stars. I also read the second book as well, and I think that I gave that a three out of five stars too. It just like wasn't my ideal book. I think that a lot of people did really like this series. I just was bored with it and it's very slow paced and a lot of backstory which I just didn't care for. I just personally like faster paced fantasies and it wasn't fast paced until like maybe this much of the book left so it just wasn't my style but I wouldn't necessarily say it's a bad book so definitely check it out because it was interesting just way too slow for me. Next is Queen of Ruin. This is by Tracy Banghart, and this one I gave a 3 out of 5 stars. I read the first book in this duology, which is Grace and Fury, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars, so I was really excited for the sequel. But again, it was just very boring in my opinion. Like, it wasn't really needed. I think that the duology could have been a standalone and just made the first book like a little bit longer and you still would have got the same vibes. You know what I'm saying? Next I have Doll Factory. This is by Elizabeth McNeil. This is another one that was just very very slow. It had a lot of backstory and it didn't really get exciting until again like this much left of the book and I just didn't care at that point. I just wanted it to be more than it was. It also has a lot of like animal cruelty and abuse in it so I just like no not for me you know so I definitely don't want it on my shelf. Next up is a YA thriller which I thought was going to be a lot better than it was and unfortunately it was just very average. It was very predictable. I just knew what was going to happen. It is Tell Me When You Feel Something by Vicky Grant and like I said, I was able to call it so early on about what like the big twist was. Like it wasn't really a twist. It was super, super obvious. So I just wasn't a fan. Next up is Better Together by Christine Riccio. This one I listened to on audio. I ended up giving it a three out of five stars. I think that if I had read it physically, I would have liked it a lot less than the three stars that I gave it for the audio. So if you are thinking of picking this up, I would recommend listening to the audio. The two characters are very unlikable. Like you don't really want either of them to come out on top. They just kind of suck <laughs> in my opinion. And the one changes swear words into like less explicit versions of it. So like shit is excrement, but she says it like every other sentence. So it's just annoying. And like fuck is intercourse. So she'll say like what the intercourse and it's just like, uh, uh, no, you know? So yeah, not a fan of this, which kind of sucks because I am a big fan of Christine, but not this Mariah. book. Next is Squad by Mariah McCarthy. This is another one. I think I gave 2.5 or 2 stars. I'm not 100% sure, but it's like a cheerleader who has a, like a psychotic break and becomes obsessed with one of her teammates because her one teammate doesn't want to hang out with her anymore. And I just got bored of it very quickly. Like it's very repetitive and I just didn't care by the end of it, so I don't want it on my shelf. Next is Late to the Party. This is by Kelly Quindlin, and this is one that I gave three out of five stars. It was just a very average coming of age story about a girl who is gay, I believe. She's either gay or bisexual. Her best friend might be the bisexual one. There was a, everybody in this book is gay in some way. They're on the LGBTQ spectrum. Some way, somehow in this book, which is great. I loved that, but just didn't care for the characters in general. But I think that a lot of people will find this book relatable because it's all about her like coming to terms with being unpopular and like coming into herself and you know it doesn't matter that I didn't go to 10,000 parties in my high school career. I had some good friends, blah blah blah, you know? 
so relatable because that's how I was in high school. Didn't go to any parties, but just I don't care about this book, so very average. Next, What I Like About You by Marissa Cantor. I gave this three out of five stars. Um, I hated the girl main character. She was very self-centered and just annoying in my opinion, which made it very hard to like this chonker of a book because it just kept on going. And it's all about this girl who has like an online persona, online best friend. She ends up moving in with her grandparent and ends up meeting her in real life best friend, but doesn't tell him that it's her because her persona is like a pseudonym, like fake name kind of thing. So she just continues to lie to him for a very, very long time. And then they get into a relationship and she continues to lie to him. So it's just like the miscommunication trope, which I am not a fan of in general. So not a fan of this book. Next is This Is All Your Fault by Amina May Safi. I gave this a 2.5 or a 2. Not 100% sure which. It was a very long time when I read this, but again, was not a fan. The representation of depression in this is not well done in my opinion. I just didn't like that aspect of the book, so it was one of the very first chapters, so my whole enjoyment of the book was very low in general after that, so yeah. And then the final book that I have that I'm sending back off to the thrift store is Now Entering Adamsville by Francesca Zappia. I gave this a 3 out of 5 star. She wrote a book called Made You Up, which I really loved, but then I read Eliza and Her Monsters last month and I didn't really like that book, which is so upsetting because it's like a booktube staple, but yeah, I was just not a fan of it. So I don't know, maybe her writing style is not for me because I gave that book three stars, this book three stars. I think I gave Made You Up four stars. That was the first book that I read by her, so I don't know. I just don't really need this book on my shelf because I didn't love it. And I'm trying to only keep books that I loved, so off to the thrift store. Alright everybody, so those were the couple of books that I am sending back to the thrift store because I just don't need them in my life anymore, so yeah, let me know down below if you read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!